Alright folks, here we go again with my Julii campaign. This is the um, seventh episode, I think, maybe eighth. Um, I don't really know where I am. But hey, I do know what I have done in the past. So, um, my la in my last video, I defended Carthage, I think twice, maybe once. And I defended Narbo Martius once from the Barbarian Hordes, which I am now going to use Decus Julius to go up and end the reign of that army that keeps coming down to attack me. And hopefully Narbo Martius won't need the reinforcements of Decus Julius so I can go ahead and seek out and destroy the rest of the Gauls. So, this is what the map is looking like so far. Um, my siege at Carthage is going pretty well. They have two turns until surrender. So, oh, and if, let me just get this out of the way. If you just saw that, that was my friend Clayton. He actually doesn't have a video, uh, a YouTube channel. But if you do want to check out some really cool stuff, go head over to my friend's channel. That is Bazoko the Mojo. And, uh, yeah, he plays, like, Fallout, Skyrim, stuff like that. And he is a pretty good player um, of those games. Definitely better than my Oblivion videos. Better quality because he's running it on a PS3 where I'm running it on my computer. I'm actually going to get a new mic because I do have sound issues so a lot of these sound pretty crappy um i don't know what it is all i know is that my mic hasn't been coming in correctly when i go to edit my video and i really can't edit the audio too much without losing my voice so i can either just voice over after or do it in during the game so everything is you know happening when it's happening and just if you guys don't mind dealing with it for a while until I get that new stuff. So we start the deployment. I'm going to zoom out, select all of these guys, set them for auto fire, select all these guys, put them from here to about there, and set them for take off their skirmish, move forward just a bit, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, and put the defensive on, and I'm gonna stretch these three out kind of similarly. stretch them out in a similar fashion, do the same exact thing. Um, these guys will pop up right here. And yeah, that's going to be the beginning of the battle. So I have more than a slight advantage right now. What am I even versing is the question. And until I get a new computer, that's going to happen with all my videos. I apologize. But that's just how it's going to happen. The reinforcements won't show up. So the battles won't be as big. And if they have several... Sometimes they do show up. I'm not going to lie. Um, but if they have a lot of units, they're not going to... It's not going to happen. My computer just can't run it, and I wish it could. And when I get a new one, it will be able to, because I'm going to get an insane amount of stuff with said computer. Um, so my videos will be better and all that. Definitely better quality, so if you're watching this now, stick in. Stick in there for a while. Um, it'll be a month or two. I don't really want it to be any longer than that myself, and if it is, I will let you know at soon as possible but if you are watching all my videos just stick in there with me for a little bit longer and we'll have so much better quality content it'll be bleeding out your eyes um, and if it actually does you might want to
consult your health care physician immediately. And I'm not even kidding about that one. <laughs> so, basically all it took was my cavalry to charge this and push both infantry back into a retreat and the battle. I lost 30 men. You still won the battle and I am pushing on. That is the most important part that I push on. And yeah, that's definitely what counts in this game. And hopefully, I, well, I know I'll take Carthage, definitely. There's no way I'm not going to, even if I have to send three more armies down that way. Though that army totals probably over one-fourth of my entire army span. So, that's the incredible thing. And Deacus is being attacked. Give me a second while I get over to Deacus. Um, by the Gauls. Who have enough Gaul. Ha ha ha. Or Gaul. If you really want to say it that way. Um, to find me. And my Roman general so close to their own homes. But I am going to push them back. Hopefully kill them. But we'll see in the coming battle. So. Yeah we'll just see. It'll have to happen like it happens. And that's what it really is. And that's what the game really is. In my point of view. It's just what happens what is what happens. And it's not a big deal crying over spilt milk. I'm just going to skip his little introduction there. And move my cavalry into a better position. I like having it's sort of symmetrical at least. If you haven't noticed that, like, I like having my cavalry go to one side, my other cavalry go to the other side, stuff like that. It's just stupid stuff. Um, that annoys me sometimes. So I'm just gonna do, 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 do select all of them, do, do, and select these guys, do, do. Oh. So here we go. I'm going to begin the battle and quickly fly over to our foe, which has swordsmen now. So it's not all warband infantry, so it is safe to ca charge some parts of this with cavalry, which I'll probably do anyways. I really wouldn't put, me, put it past me to charge um, with cavalry, but I am going to... If you don't know what I just did there, I clicked, um, I left clicked and it deselected my selection for repositioning my units. But I re will reposition my cavalry like that, and kind of like that. I'm gonna have them both run, and we'll just see where this battle takes us from the beginning. I'm going to speed up a little so my enemies get to me a little bit faster. The only cavalry they have are Barbarian Warband in the back. Um, and they have Warhounds. What? Um, maybe they don't have a general. No, it looks like they have dogs. Not many of them, thank God. But enough to do some damage to my troops. Um, because my line infantry and my cavalry will both be frightened by dogs, which is the only f hard part about fighting them, is I don't know exactly what is good against them. And if you do know, you should tell me, because I've played this game a lot, but I still don't know. Uh, this is the first time I've actually versed them in battle. I have used them before. They can come in really handy when you don't have many too many troops and you need to scare your enemy into a submission. Okay. Yeah. 
and that is how the cookie crumbles. They are retreating faster than you can say Honolulu in Hawaii. Which, you know, that's actually a good thing for me. That I can break their lines that easily. But they will be coming back for more. Is the thing. But no, actually they won't. They will be trying to leave the battlefield, which is good for me. As their men retreat, I'm just going to slaughter a crap ton of them. And I truly mean that. I'm going to kill as many Gauls as I can before this battle is out. And I just trampled my enemy's general. And here my cavalry go over the hill. So yeah, that's basically the short end to this um, battle. And I'm kind of glad it ended this way because I didn't lose a whole lot of troops. Actually, I lost barely any, if you look. And that's always good. I keep my army alive and I keep it charging and that is the most important part is to keep your army going no matter what don't let your army fall behind so as they leave the battlefield and my commander chases them I win the battle killing a total of a thousand one hundred and seventy one men in the little time that that battle had taken up or at least the engagement of the battle, because the battle might have taken a while, but the engagement part of it took less than no time. They engaged my line, I charged cavalry, and that is the perfect example of when cavalry is good, is they broke rank when, uh, where at points where I charged my cavalry as well as just engaging my line. So if you can make them break rank, with cavalry charges, cavalry can be the most important thing ever um, in small army tactics. If you only have like four Hastati, some rangers, and whatever, you it's definitely good to have that option of charging cavalry when your enemy won't expect it, breaking a few, if not all, of their lines and pushing them back. So here I'm accepting trade rights of other people so I can get in more money, um, so I can build more armies and expand more, which will get me more money, which will allow me to build more armies, which will allow me to expand more. So it's an endless, a never-ending cycle, and it's a good one, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, so I can now upgrade the town of Sig Sig Suggesta. I'm going to call it Suggesta probably what it's called anyways and 2007 here we go I can upgrade my capital and that will be able to build archers and I can't upgrade this one yet but it is very close and at a normal tax rate I might not be making the most money but my population is growing and as your population grows at a normal tax rate you increasingly get more and more money and I don't know what his third unit is, but that army there is not a danger to any of my armies here. Um, nor is this one. I took out a larger army at Narbo Martius, and my force at Narbo Martius is that, exactly. And most of these soldiers are wounded, so the fact that I was able to do that was good enough, for me at least. And if you haven't seen that video, I might not. Uh, I will have put it up by the time I put this one up. But if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely go check it out. It's I think my last video, the one just before this, where Monabo Martius gets besieged and I push the Gauls off with barely, with just a handful of troops I have in the city that you see now. And this really isn't that many troops, but I somehow held the city, and I was extremely surprised myself. Um, my commander here really played a big part in that, Vibius Julius, so he is a good faction heir, and, well, 
I shouldn't have to change that. I'm going to build those in case I actually do want to besiege the town of Lug Dum Dum. Lug da Dum Dum. Lug Dum Dum, I guess, is what it's going to be called for me now. Um, so I'm just going to end the turn, and if Carthage attacks, Carthage attacks. If it doesn't, I take Carthage at the beginning of my next turn. And there you go. Actually, as soon as it hits Carthage, Carthage's turn, I took Carthage, and that was the biggest victory I have had so far, taking Carthage with less men. So I'm basically just going to retrain all these troops so they are up to par to defend the city of Carthage. I'm going to lower the tax rate, and that's not even going to do much I need I need I need something I really don't have to spare which might be bad let's see show settlement details it is all cause to oh population growth is all cause to mainly squalor I can get rid of 75% I can't get rid of 75% but I can get rid of quite a bit um, unrest hopefully will go away. Devastation, corruption. Yeah. But the grow the town is still growing and I hope that there is many a way to fix this mistake quickly because if not it will go straight to the rebels and I will have to besiege the whole city again. So, if it is worth it, I will try to save it in whatever the means. Alright, um, now the new army I have at Rome is going to connect with my new army at Iridium. And yes, I am sending a lot of my faction people out into battle, and I should have just attacked the brigands, but I am sending them a lot of them out into battle to engage my enemies but you know that's kinda what you need to do you need to expand you need to be willing to take that extra step that nobody else is gonna take but don't forget the most important part would be to defend your cities whether it's a city all the way at its core just put a few town watch at it so it won't cost much but as soon as your your enemies start getting closer and closer to the core of your thing if you start to lose which really it could happen I'm not saying it will but it could you should be more and more willing to train troops near your core you shouldn't really have to train troops near your core you should be able to keep them to your outer spaces and even I don't really do that you should keep them to your outer spaces and quickly just attack 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 or um, with armies and if you attack 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 enough and you keep your enemy at bay instead of letting your enemy come to you you can actually get a lot more done by pushing against your enemy instead of letting your enemy push against you so if you're in wars with more than one country make sure they are near like say um, I wanted to go to war with Germany and I also want to go to war with a second faction I would pick Britain because they're both to the north so they won't push on the south of uh, on my south southern settlements. Instead, they'll just push push down on my north ones. So that's easily defensible. I don't have to defend my south ones as much, so I can leave those ones behind. I still need troops there, but I can have more troops near my northern ones. Whereas if you do what I'm doing now, I'm kind of moving towards Carthage and Gaul at the same time. The only reason, in my opinion, it's working is because. Carthage has no ships roaming around landing near my settlements. And Gaul, well, I'm pushing them back quite easily and extremely fast. Not extremely, but pretty fast. I'm actually just going to let that draw out on its own, to tell you the truth. I, uh, I really didn't need those mercenaries, but everyone underestimates mercenaries. It's the truth of the game. So I'm going to end. 
my video and my turn here and we will start up my next video at the beginning of the next turn and I hope that Carthage will no longer be in a revolt so I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you watch my other videos and I will see you guys on the battlefield